Hello and welcome to the Musical Instrument Investigator. Today on the website of Adam Partridge Auction is based in the UK and we're going to have a look at one of their latest auctions which is this three day auction of loads of different stuff but we're only interested in day two which is finishing on the 9th of November, it's the third today so a few days left to go which has some musical instruments. Now there aren't that many musical instruments to be honest, only about 50 or 60 but I thought it might be worth having a quick look so we're just going to blitz through this. Uh, looks like the buyer's premium for this auction is 24% so that's what you pay on top of the final hammer price so whatever the final price is take 24% of that and add it on top this is a UK based auction so bear that in mind if you're looking to bid on something from outside of the UK import export fees shipping CITES all of that fun stuff you'll see all the terms at the top of the uh, website and just to reiterate this one this auction is finishing on the 9th of November um, just to say if you do enjoy these videos please consider subscribing like or comment because it really does help so a few days left to go before this auction let's just kind of dig in and see if there's anything interesting so first of all we have a full-size german violin labeled george klotz 1753 with a two two piece back length 35.7 estimate five to seven you can see the 24 percent buyers premium now i did quickly look at this and this could well be correct this could actually be a uh, George Klotz, um, quite possibly, just having a quick look at the um, kind of F holes and com uh, comparing with some Teresio uh, images. This could be correct. I don't want to say that for definite because um, it can be pretty difficult to tell sometimes and can be quite misleading. Certainly with this estimate, it seems like they are kind of assuming that they, this is probably what it is. Uh, but difficult to 100% uh, to say, but I think there is definitely a possibility that this could be um, an actual Klotz violin. But uh, if you're interested in this kind of stuff, definitely do your kind of due diligence and do some uh, research. It's obviously got a few things going on here, some open cracks right there um, and needs a bit of TLC, but uh, I I do think that this could actually be uh, a genuine uh, clots here let's have a let's see if we can look in a bit further looks like there is some kind of a net graph it's really difficult to see um, but the scroll looks kind of consistent with what you'd expect I think it is possible hard to see what's going on here exactly with the label but yeah I mean an interesting looking violin for sure this interesting kind of quite upright f holes I think I think this is this is possibly correct so that is an interesting uh, thing to see moving on to the uh, next lot there let's kind of get back to our 100% uh, uh, view it's a bit of a crazy start here uh, a full-size German violin with one piece back length 35.6 labeled uh, Joseph Kretschmann 18 something with two violin bows 400 to 600 there let's have a look looks kind of interesting and bows somewhat curious let's have a look a label it's hard to say there some more pictures I wonder if we can just skip into the pictures this way this probably makes more sense a lot easier yeah this bow could actually be quite interesting could be a French bow of some kind so that's curious. Violin itself, it's kind of hard to say. Looks kind of at least more interesting than some of the stuff we see. Quite interesting varnish and uh, corners there. So not the worst lot, I think it's kind of interesting. So, so far we're on to doing a good thing. Right. H. Clotel, a full-size French violin with two-piece back, length 35.8, label dated 1890, cased with two bows, three to five hundred on that. Let's see what we've got here. That's obviously an absolutely terrible bow. That looks like some kind of modern bow as well. The actual instrument itself doesn't look too bad, actually. Could well be. What it claims to be. I see this bow may be nicer than I first thought. It's good to see these additional photos. I 
think it's nothing too crazy but uh, depending on the money it goes for it could be okay silver mounted vinyl bow stamped org praja and nickel mounted bow let's have a quick look at these pictures there certainly looks like a fairly interesting uh, bow there and already got a bid on that 270 so that's popular right full size violin for restoration probably french one piece back 35.5 there's a big condition report bit here three to five hundred already got a bid on that so another popular thing yeah nice looking uh violin there actually nice kind of corners and nice varnish so definitely an interesting one there i think that will probably be quite uh quite popular for sure I'll probably go for quite good money I would think yeah nice uh, nice looking back there yeah interesting violin in these pin holes an old German cello with two piece back and a bow 200 to 300 Okay, definitely an interesting looking one. Looks like it has a massive soundpost crack on the back, possibly, so bear that in mind if you're looking to bid on it. So that's gonna be a bit of a problematic. Two to three hundred, that's a fair estimate though. A full size artist Apollo violin. The Primavera bow, we don't really need to look into that, it's a fairly standard trade violin there. Full size German violin with two piece back with bow. Let's have a quick look at this. I'm not sure if this is going to be anything in particular, but let's check on the safe size. Yeah, I don't think this is really anything super interesting to look at. An old German cello, two piece back there, labelled Geo Stiger. Okay. Let's have a look at this one. Not so many images on that, but it would have been nice to see the back. Doesn't look super exciting. Full size German violin, unlabeled with one piece back, and a German three quarter size violin with two piece back. Wow, these pretty weird F holes. Wow, look at that. That's quite odd. Interesting. That is very strange. I don't think I've ever seen F holes quite like that before. Really, really odd. It's quite scary looking, actually. Wow, very strange. Old German double bass for restoration. 50 to 100 pounds. Wow. Bargain. That needs a hell of a lot of work. That does really is in not a great condition okay but estimate is pretty low so that's fair enough full size Barini violin 1920 this is also a violin that we don't really need to look at it's a fairly standard trade instrument full size German violin unlabeled with three assorted bows okay this might be worth having a look at this looks like it's been through the wars a bit got neck craft there it looks like to be some kind of older kind of German Austrian type violin but wow it's had a bit of a tough life this one oh, that's a really beautiful scroll though look at that that's really nice looking scroll interesting looking violin but it's had a lot of work done what's the estimate 50 to 80 I mean you can't argue with that estimate that's completely fair uh, could be a good project for someone kind of nice looking instrument full-size German violin Lion skull. This is your typical trade violin, trade lion head. Nothing too exciting on that one. Modern Stentor Conservatoire violin. We don't really need to look at that. An old three quarter size violin with two piece back and a modern Chinese one. I don't think we need to really look at that so much either. 
two modern rock style bows okay do they have any markings or anything that's quite an interesting head that is quite an early uh, looking bow there wonder if we have any stamps or anything that might indicate who made it can't quite see quite like that bow actually quite like that head that's quite interesting yeah it's quite a simple bow but it's quite nice quite elegant so like that what's the lot 40 to 60 that's fair can't argue with that three quarter size german violin once again pretty standard i don't think we need to go into that too much another one of these german lion violins sadly these are pretty common full size Czechoslovakian violin yep nothing too crazy there full size German violin Steiner below the button this is another standard trade violin full size violin probably German we'll have a look at this but I think it's pretty pretty standard stuff oh wow okay wasn't quite expecting to see that uh, back yeah, interesting uh, interesting wood choice there for the back that's quite curious interesting bow okay that lot's a bit more interesting than I thought it looks like the C the front join has been opened and re-glued a bit badly so that's a bit of a problem modern full size violin don't think we need to look at that one Modern Chinese Skylark Viola once again. Don't need to look at that. Sebastian Klotz, one piece back. Now, I think this is definitely just a kind of standard trade violin. That's an awful bow. Don't think there's anything interesting about that particular instrument. Whole load of bows might be something in there that's interesting to someone, but uh, not to me. Full size violin, probably German, unlabeled. So that's kind of looks like the scroll is kind of interesting on that. Curious. I think once again nothing too exciting really on that. Oscar uh, Adler Machnerkirk in a German bassoon there, two to three thousand. Okay, that's fairly kind of high, uh, high estimate. Don't know much about that maker. Be honest. Gibson, a Les Paul Custom in black with gold hardware. Sold with a hard case. Okay. Interesting kind of sticker on that as well. Villain. Curious. Les Paul Custom. Don't really know enough to know if that's a interesting one or not. A late 19th century inlaid Swiss three-cylinder music box. Okay, let's have a look at that. That's quite an interesting bit of uh, furniture there. Quite a nice looking thing from a kind of engineering point of view. Binson. Ecorec 2 with case, possibly used by Clodagh Rogers in the 1970s, making its debut at the London Palladium. Interesting, 800 to 1200. Roland Chorus RE501 Echo Unit, 800 to 1200 there. Lacknall & Co. Ebonize English 35 Key Concertina, 800 to 1200. We always see these in the auctions, very popular. This does look like quite a nice one with its box. Yamaha French Horn, 800 to 1200 there. Karl Griesbaum, a circa 1920s German singing bird automation. Okay, that's something a little bit uh, different that we don't usually see. 600 to 800. Fender Vibroverb 63 reissue, 600 to 800 there. Fender 65 reissue, twin reverb, 3 to 500. Elkavox electric accordion, okay, with amplifier three to five hundred. Harmony uh, hollow body electric guitar there. Fender sixty three reissue reverb unit, two to three hundred on that. 
a modern bass file built from a kit supplied by the early music shop in Bradford by Arthur Marshall Fullwood, May 1985, cased with two bows, two to three hundred. Okay, interesting. Need some new strings. Not many pictures, that's good. Okay, interesting. Well, one to possibly keep an eye on. Fender Telecaster, made in Japan. A oh, left-handed one. Always interesting to see. Quite nice. Serona, German Contra Bassoon. Okay, interesting. Two to three hundred. Certainly interesting one. Antoine Courtois and Millet, 19th century silver-plated echo cornet with accessories. Kelworth, tenor saxophone there. Squire, made in Japan, left-handed uh, strat there. Epiphone, left-handed casino, so clearly it's some left-handed player's guitar collection here. Aria Pro 2, electric guitar, made in Korea. A late 19th century German symphonium in ebonized case with 12 discs, 100 to 150. We do kind of see these occasionally. Northern Renaissance instrument, modern tenor by George Stepani, Manchester, number 13, dated 1980. Overall length 90 centimeters, case with a bow, estimate 100 to 150. Yeah, interesting. I mean, George Stepani, like really good, respected maker. So, I mean, this is a. Uh, a good kind of opportunity for uh, someone to buy an interesting um, vial here so it looks quite nice looks like it's kind of I think modeled after a Venetian instrument it looks familiar to one of the ones in the um, Ashmolean Museum but my brain is kind of escaped me at the moment but uh, yeah cool looking uh, instrument there obviously the varnish has suffered a bit you can see there's problems there but 100 to 150 I think it's a good opportunity so yeah cool looking instrument there Fender Strat there left handed so once again we're in the left handed collection a full size German Stradivarius copy okay 80 to 120 I don't think there's anything too crazy with this but let's have a look just in case, no, it's a pretty standard trade violin, but maybe a little better than some of the normal ones we see. Uh, George Formey model Banjalele with bird's eye maple resonator. Okay, let's have a look at this. That's quite nice. Back on that. Right, we've got some records. I don't think we need to look at that. I think we still have a few instruments somewhere there. Musima, a bass guitar there. More records, we can ignore that. Invicta, bass trumpet. Boozy and Co. Brass cornet. Besson and Co. Silver plated Class A prototype cornet. Okay. Boozy and Hawk silver plated cornet, various recording e bits, Tenada guitars, classical guitar, some boss uh, pedals there, more pedals there, line six and stuff, group of 12 unused amplifier valves, it can be quite useful, some wind instruments there. 19th century Swiss music box. Premier silver plated tenor bugle. Elkart alto saxophone. Antoine Courtois brass cased trumpet. Some other bits here. A few more instruments than I thought there were actually. J.W. Moore brass cornet. Possibly Joseph Wallace brass cornet. Silver plated bugle. Portable gramophone. That's a little bit out of our remit. A.W. Rosen, Rosengren cornet there. Casio Tonebank CT395 keyboard. 
Resonata classical guitar. Ah, one of the Watkins Copycat uh, Echo units, 30 to 50. That's a really reasonable estimate there. That's worth a couple of hundred quid, I would think. Monarch brass trumpet. Premier silver plated bugle. Some other bits here and there. Bougian hawk silver plated cased flute, 30 to 50. Large quantity of various brass instrument mouthpieces. Wow, that is quite a large uh, quantity, to be fair. Bougie and Hawks case clarinet. Some other records and bits we can ignore. Top of the pops. Antoria, Colorado, EA88 electroacoustic guitar. King, brass case trombone. Bougie and Hawks clarinet. Selma cased clarinet. Silver plated kazoo, okay. Kazoo B, okay, interesting. Simple wooden flute. Hona Organetta 3 piano accordion for restoration, that's pretty funky looking. Early 20th century banjolele cased. Six bar auto harp with rose detail. F. Van Calvert brass cornet. Their records a George Formby case ukulele with Romanian mandolin F Besson brass cornet there and I think that is pretty much actually the end of it having looked previously where this uh, bits finished so yeah kind of an interesting auction actually a few bits I think are kind of worth uh, watching a few kind of curious guitars and bowed instruments uh, a few other little knickknacks here and there yeah, kind of an interesting uh, auction, actually. Not as good as the usual um, Adam Partridge ones. Sometimes the Adam Partridge auctions are great. They have some really good stuff. But this one, it's kind of, you know, a bit hit and miss. But an interesting auction anyway. So I'll put a link in the description. Check it out, see what you think. You might find some stuff that you're interested in. And, uh, yeah, thanks a lot for watching. And I'll catch you next time. Ciao.